Hi, and welcome to another edition of Your Health with Dr. Christy. My name is Dr. Christy Reisinger, and today I'm going to answer a viewer's question, how well do the mRNA COVID vaccines really work? The phase three trial data told us that the Pfizer vaccine is 95% effective in preventing symptomatic COVID-19, while Moderna is 94% effective. And while the Johnson & Johnson vaccine is not an mRNA vaccine, that one-shot vaccine has 66% efficacy overall and 85% efficacy against severe disease. But we all know that real circumstances are different and the real life outcomes rarely match the ideal situation seen in the trials. The trials did not choose people that were immunocompromised and most were white and not overweight. But now that we have about six months of data and about 1.7 billion doses of the vaccine that have been given so far, what does the real world data say? I'm happy to say it's been really positive. Let's look at the data from the mRNA vaccine so far. In early May, the CDC published data from about 4,000 healthcare workers whom they followed from mid-December to mid-March. Of these, 63% of participants received the Pfizer vaccine, while 30% received the Moderna vaccine. 75% of the participants received one or both doses of the vaccines. They found there were a total of 161 COVID infections in the unvaccinated workers, while there were 16 COVID infections in workers who had received only one dose by the time of their infection, and there were three infections in people who had received both doses and were two weeks out from their second dose. From this data, they concluded that mRNA vaccine's effectiveness following two doses was 90%. Furthermore, a study published in The Lancet on May 15th gave good results out of Israel. They studied over 230,000 people infected with SARS-CoV-2 and followed the 67% of those infections that occurred in people ages 16 and older, since this is the population they were vaccinating exclusively with the Pfizer mRNA vaccine. They found the Pfizer vaccine was 95% effective seven days after the second dose against the SARS-CoV-2 infection, and was 97.5% effective against severe or critical COVID infections, and the effectiveness seemed to be similar even in the oldest adults greater than 85 years old. What great news. But some limitations with both of these studies is the limited number of variants that were circulating at the time of the vaccination and afterwards. So what do we know about breakthrough infections? These are COVID infections that occur despite being fully vaccinated. Can they happen? Well, of course, but thankfully they're rare. The CDC released data up to April 30th, which revealed that out of 101 million persons fully vaccinated in the US, there were just over 700 people hospitalized with COVID, of which 132 people died from COVID-related illness. This equates to a very, very tiny percentage of people that died from COVID after getting a COVID vaccine. Furthermore, we're starting to get hospital admission data as well. Admission data from the Cleveland Clinic from January to mid-April showed that they have had 4,300 hospital admissions for patients with COVID-19. Of those, 99% were not fully vaccinated. Let's stop and think about that. Of over 4,000 admissions with COVID, only 1% of these were fully vaccinated. I think this is really amazing and encouraging. I'm sure they're hoping to publish this data at some point, but at this time, it was simply commentary from physicians at the hospital on the Cleveland Clinic homepage. But I do want to point out that a consistent issue with many medical trials in general is that they tend to recruit white participants, leaving out Americans of color. The phase three Pfizer and Moderna vaccine trials were both comprised of about 80% white people. They did, however, include more Hispanics, the Pfizer vaccine had 26%, while Moderna had 20% of their participants who were Hispanic. So I know the pharmaceutical companies are trying to improve this, which is a good thing. So in the end, what's the takeaway? 
Well, despite steady demographics that were not highly representative of persons of color and not clear on the pre-existing conditions that the participants had, the effectiveness of the mRNA vaccines has really held up in real world situations with data that's very similar to what was seen in the trials. This is such good news. Thanks for joining me.